One of the most common spine surgeries that we do minimally invasively are for disc herniations, which cause a type of condition called sciatica. In the surgery, what we do is we have your spine here. This is where your pelvis is, and this is where your head would be. These small bones right here are the bones that you can feel when you're touching your back. What we do is using, utilizing x-ray guidance, we're able to put a small probe on top of a bone. And utilizing different size tubes, we're able to dilate up to about a 22 millimeter size tube. That's about the size of the top of your knuckle out to your thumb. Through that tube, we're able to spread muscles apart instead of burning them or damaging them in an open conventional surgery. Through this small tube, we're able to make a hole in the bone and that gains us access to the spinal canal where the nerves are. Through that small hole within the bone, we gently move the nerves over to the side and we're able to pull out a disc that's usually the size of a gumball, which is likely causing the patient's pain. I like to describe it as having a rock in your shoe. You can have the rock in your shoe all the time and you can ignore it and you never really can get the pain or the feeling away until you just take your shoe off and get the rock out. We get the rock out of your back through a 22 millimeter hole where you can go home that day. Spine surgery is done for two main reasons. Number one is decompressing nerves or taking away the pressure off of nerves. And the second reason for spine surgery is to stabilize bones that are moving inappropriately. The good thing about minimally invasive spine surgery is that you're able to do these two main procedures through very small incisions. For example, if you have your lumbar spine here, where these bones, which are called your spinous processes, these are the bones that you can feel when you're touching your back. We're able to, with a probe, go down on top of one of the bones that are likely the cause of your pain. And through that hole, we're able to use tubes, which dilate your muscles up to about 22 millimeters. It's basically the size of the tip of your thumb down to the first knuckle. Through that tube, we're able to introduce different specialized instruments that allow us to gain access to your spinal canal where your nerves are. Utilizing special instruments and microscopes as well, we're able to take the pressure off of your nerves. The great thing about this is that if needed, some people's bones are moving inappropriately that are causing the pressure on top of the nerves. And through these same incisions, we're able to put screws and rods which can stabilize the bones and stop it from moving inappropriately. This allows us to maintain our goals of surgery, which is decompression of nerves and if needed, stabilizing the bones from moving inappropriately. If at the end of the case, we need to place rods and screws to stop bones from moving inappropriately, that is what we call fusion surgery. And that is something that can be done minimally invasively along with decompressing or taking pressure off of your nerves. We at Florida Orthopedic Institute are also very evidence-based with the type of procedures that we talk to our patients about. We not only publish papers about the type of procedures that we do, but we follow evidence-based guidelines to try and counsel our patients and come to a shared decision on the type of procedure that would be most beneficial for them. Whether that would be a conventional operation versus a minimally invasive operation that's done by conventional methods.